Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. and Once again, it is time for a bench press day. So let's get right into it. Um, this is going to be a real long vlog. Uh, these upper body workouts are, are really long, even with me trimming the footage down as, uh, as much as possible. So something you guys will note, um, some, some changes with what I'm doing with the forearms just based upon what I'm feeling on all the exercises. Uh, I'm really noticing that I don't feel anything in any of the forearm work that I don't feel on any of my pulling, right? The reverse curls, uh, wrist curls, all that stuff. It's pretty much the same. So I realize I probably should just be very selective in what I do for forearms, and I'll get to that as we get further into the workout. Uh, but arms do need to be a high priority for me on this cut. Um, and you guys saw what I said, and uh, I did a video this morning. So people who, who are saying, hey, I don't understand why you're uh, doing only the higher reps. I did a full breakdown for you guys. I explained it in a coffee chat. But the workouts are good. I'm getting a good pump. Everything feels good. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely feeling the fatigue of this. I've got a little bit of a cold right now, so I did a lot of extra sleeping yesterday. Uh, but the workouts themselves are actually quite good till I get into the, the pressing about midway through, then I just seem to run out of steam. Uh, but the benching, I'm, I'm really happy with uh, what I feel on my chest and everything on this now that I'm doing really no arch. Uh, and what I'm doing is not, when we say flat back, it needs to be clear that it doesn't mean you're trying to touch your whole back flat to the, to the bench. It means you just lay down with what your normal arch would be because we have a natural curve in our spine, which means if you were to pick your feet up and set them back down flat, it would be in that position. Okay. And I'm noticing that, again, it's all chest. I feel pretty much all pectoral on this benching, which is good. That's what we want. We want to feel a lot of chest. And what I'm trying to do as I get further in, uh, so that I'm hitting right about 10 reps, I'm doing the longer pauses as I get right there to the end, so that I'm creating uh, plenty of fatigue, that I get a great chest pump. The pull-ups are feeling really good. I feel like my shoulder health is improving so much. Some of these I'm coming all the way down, but I'm, I'm not pausing a long time, but as I get near the end, I'm just hanging at a dead, dead hang on, on the final rep sometimes. But again, pointing out to people, this is my dead hang still. This is an improvement, but that is literally as far as I can stretch, right? It's better than it was, and we're going to keep doing the pullovers. I feel like the pullovers have been the, the greatest help there, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. So... What we're doing with this, though, is uh, three sets of bench followed by three sets of pull-ups as a superset, and, and they're right at 10 reps. And on the pull-ups, eventually those are going to go up, and I don't know that I'm really going to increase the weight on this benching. I might just get to where I do sets of 12 or, or whatever I do. With cutting, though, performance may not improve at all because the scale's going down. I'm going to keep getting leaner, and, and quite frankly, if I can maintain all of this uh, at a lighter body weight, lower body fat, I'll still be pretty happy with that, right? Because context, I've benched 365 while doing, you know, with my three sets of 10 being fairly challenging, right? With pause benching and everything. Uh, and what I'm going to continue to do is hammer triceps and hammer, hammer arms so that when I go back to power benching, I'll have that extra tricep, right? I'll have all that tricep still so that hopefully I'll have some big numbers uh, if I choose to do power benching again coming up or uh, stepping back on the platform eventually. But right now I can't worry about it. I've got to just focus on muscle. Focus on body composition, focus on muscle. And I feel like these workouts I'm doing now are, are great for that. And as you guys can tell, we're, we're getting leaner. Leaner and leaner over time. And it's going, to be, it's going to be a process. And that's another reason I'm training this way is to make sure that I, I stick it out. By focusing on body composition, and rep quality and set quality and stimulating muscle growth, I don't freak out about strength. Therefore, there's no reason to end the cut. No reason to end the cut. Uh, so then what I, I did on these, I'm doing incline bench uh, supersetting with rows. And I'm noticing, again, some, some workouts I've been able to get my, my three sets, but uh, some of these I'm really, by that fifth set, I'm running out of steam. This set of pressing, meaning second set of incline, because I do three sets of bench first. Um, I also decided today it's just easier to set up to just come over and do the bent over rows. Um, I've alternated back and forth between 
doing uh, one arm dumbbell rows and bent over rows. And I feel like the bent over rows really gives me, again, a lot of grip training. It just feels like it's better overall for, for my grip. Um, I feel they're relatively similar in terms of back activation, particularly if I focus on getting that stretch at the bottom on these, touching the bar up to my chest, not the stomach, like a lot of people do. So we're keeping the range of motion nice and long. Um, but the thing is, I notice on my rowing that my forearms feel the exact same fatigue they feel when I do the reverse wrist curls, which tells me that's really, really the pulling is, is doing most of the work. So what I'm going to do is just hammer curls. Because when I go back and look at where I felt like my arms were kind of the biggest uh, a while back, I felt like they were a little bigger at a certain point before the cut. I was doing plenty of hammer curls and stuff. All right, hammer. I feel like hammer curls do a lot for me in terms of grip training, forearm training, plus bicep. But triceps are going to be a, a pretty high priority still, and just arms in general. So you guys will notice my arms are going to get a higher priority. Well, obviously, we're doing big movements for, for chest and back and everything, and, and that will include the pullovers. But arms, biceps, triceps, forearms. But the forearms will get worse with the hammer curls at this point. I, again, it's, it's not going away from the, the direct forearm work. It's just realizing that the most bang for my buck is something like hammer curls. And I might go back and mess with some of the wrist curls and reverse wrist curls. But, you know, I did them for a few workouts. And, again, I'm not noticing. I don't feel like my forearms are really worked any harder than if I just do all my pulling, do lots and lots of pulling. Particularly, I notice when I'm doing my RDLs without straps. Um, and then hammer curls. Right? My forearms feel just as pumped at the end of this workout as they, they did when I've done the other stuff. All right. So after we, we did those, those 10 big movements, 10 sets of big exercises, so three, three, and then two, and two. Um, and again, I just felt like I run out of, out of chest pressing strength at that point. Uh, the work capacity just kind of gives out. And again, it's possibly due to the calorie deficit. Uh, of course, in the lighting here, and I have the door closed because it's cold outside. I didn't want to put a shirt on. Uh, and this actually stays relatively warm in here. Uh, if I just keep the door closed, obviously it's a little dimmer. I'm going to look even more jacked in this lighting. But I think this also shows how much difference lighting makes. Now, it's not to say that I'm not leaner and more jacked, but again, lighting's a big deal. Um, tricep extensions, though, I'm really focusing on getting that stretch, trying to take those through a really long range of motion. Uh, curls, the same thing. Right now I'm doing these super strict, and it's only because biomechanically it should work. If you were to ask me what I feel more in my biceps, I feel power curls with a really heavy weight more than I do that. I, I feel like at certain points in my bicep, but I know that as long as I'm, I'm really doing those strict, the bicep's getting a ton of work. Like, let's take it through the long range of motion, work our arms thoroughly, right? So I'm making sure these, this first uh, exercise I do really finishes off parts of the biceps and triceps that I'm not working on on the pushing and pulling. All right, we want to make sure we double down on that long head activation. So trying to really, really get that stretch, right? Focusing on that stretch. And then snapping it up. But then some of the eccentrics, I take them a little slow. Some of the stuff as I get close to, to failure, I'm, I'm pausing down at the bottom in that stretch position. Again, trying to create those, those lengthened positions. Uh, same thing when I'm doing the, uh, the barbell curls. I lean forward just a little bit so that we can get the full lockout at the bottom without hitting the thighs, bringing it up towards the face to work the, the full range of motion. But notice I don't curl it back up and over. So I keep the wrist cock back so that there's tension on the bicep up there. That's the main thing. Keep your wrist cock back. It, it makes sure that biceps take a little more load than the forearms, right? We're making sure the biceps work. That's the main thing, right? Making sure the biceps work through the, through the entire movement, okay? And I can't do a lot of weight when I do this. I mean, you guys just see me do power curls with 185. This is 65 pounds. 12 to 13 reps is all I can handle. I'm pretty much hitting failure there. Can't do anymore. But again, we're working the biceps through a long range of motion. Keep in mind, pull-ups and the rows do hit them to some extent, and then we finish off with hammer curls here in a bit. So I'm making sure I work the arm completely. Just like with the, with the chest, you know, we're working a flat bench with a long range of motion, a pause, an incline with a pause, and we're doing those, those pullovers for that deep stretch. 
hitting the chest from three angles. Same thing with the lats hitting all of that. So the arms is the same way. Yes, we get, we get some arm work on all the pushing and pulling, but I want to make sure that I'm thoroughly working the arms because my arm development has always held me back. It's always been the loose skin, love handle area, and then arms that have probably prevented me from having a good physique all this time as a strength athlete. So now we double down. Let's work the arms completely. But I feel like my forearms have been jacked without for a lot of forearm work. Um, again, I'm noticing I'm not really getting any more out of it than if I just throw hammer curls in. But hammer curls are money. Hammer curls are, are a phenomenal exercise, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but again, the tricep extensions, trying to, as I get near the end, trying to really, really stretch those last few reps to make sure I am getting those deep fibers, those deep fibers that we're not getting on the pressing. I want to make sure as we get to the, the, the end of the sets that I'm thoroughly fatigued those in that long head. So again, trying to get that deep stretch and pause it. All right. Uh, bicep curls on these, I'm trying to keep these super strict, trying to work the bicep through the longest range of motion that I possibly can of both functions. And, I, and granted, we can argue as to how much that shoulder extension actually impacts bicep development. We can argue it, but I'm just going to do it. Let's just work the muscle all the way through, making sure we're keeping a load on the bottom by leaning forward so that we can get the full range of motion. Okay trying to squeeze it for just a little bit, especially the final reps, trying to squeeze it really hard at the top and then lower it under control. Then the laterals, of course, laterals, not a big deal. My shoulders get a crazy pump from these. Any, No matter how I do these, no matter how strict, arm bend, straight bend, these are semi-straight, keeping these fairly strict. I'm just taking them right about to 10 reps and that's all I can handle. I'm pausing on some of the final reps because I can't get to 10 reps if I don't. Um, but again, I think this lighting, uh, this angle, you can definitely see the chest development it's coming along well, starting to get that separation up there all through the upper chest a little bit. Uh, for, I think the incline work has helped with that a lot. So again, keep developing that. Pullovers, this has been for my shoulder mobility, and that's come up too. People are like, well, what else does it work? Well, it works traps and lats, it works pecs, it works long head of the tricep. Again, we help fill in the gaps from my other movements. So this does give me a third chest exercise. It does give me a third lat exercise. Keep in mind those RDLs and stuff hit that too on the lower days. Okay, so it's pull-ups, rows, pullovers for lats. Bench press, incline, bench press, pullovers for pecs. My shoulders are just getting worked on all of it. And the laterals are, the, laterals are there to make sure that that side head still gets hammered pretty good because it may be neglected mechanically even though there's a lot of spillover. Just making sure we're finishing it off. But again, those other exercises, uh, hammering the biceps and triceps through all their functions. And then we come in and hit the hammer curls. Hammer curls still work biceps again. We're also working the, uh, the whole forearm. Like I feel these, just like I do the other stuff, if I squeeze, squeeze them super tight, I still feel the, the forearm uh, extensors. But again, radial brachialis, brachialis, making sure all those other parts of the arm that really add that extra thickness are being worked, just making sure they're being finished off. Okay, so I do these last few exercises as triceps so that we get through them quick. So it goes extension, curl, lateral extension curl lateral. So the same thing right here, um, finishing off with the high rep band press down. So I do the pullover and we do the hammer curls. Um, and these just destroy my forearms too. So, you know, it comes over to, to forearm stuff because I've done all this pulling and then I have to squeeze these for the high reps. At the end, my forearms are on fire from this just as much as the triceps. And so on these, I'm going with the lightest band. Why? Because it's the only one I can lock out the way I like to do these. So, uh, again, gives me a lot of reps, uh, working again another function of the triceps, just getting as much pump as possible, helping develop the tendons. Again, I want to keep that tendon health on point for if I need to triceps specialize heavy again later for benching. Uh, I like to keep it healthy, but again, getting more blood flow, more pump to the triceps. My triceps need really need the work. And honestly, if you look at all the total sets, because the pullovers hit triceps also, right? They're working the long head of the tricep, which is really a weak link for me. My triceps are probably getting more work in, in terms of just total work than any other muscle. Biceps are getting a lot. 
but the triceps are probably getting, uh, I would say, the highest individual volume because we have the five sets of pressing, then the pullovers hit them. But then we're doing all this other stuff, doing two smaller exercises for them. Again, my triceps are probably still my, my worst muscle group in my upper body. So if I can add meat to those triceps as I bring that waistline down, right? Get a few more inches off the waist, get rid of that love handle flank loose skin area. Um, I think it'll be in a good spot. I think I'll probably be in a spot to where people go, okay, dude, you, you, you're looking pretty good. Even though you've been a, a fatty boom batty power lifter all this time, uh, you're looking crazy good for your, you know, not just for my age. I don't want it to be for my age, you know, Cause same thing with the deadlift. I pulled 635 in my late forties. I don't, that's a good for any age. You know, I don't like to rely on that. It's great for marketing at my age because the older guys know how hard it is. They know it's how difficult it is. But it needs to be, let's just look good. Let's look good and be strong and be fit. Okay, those Golden Era guys pulled it off. Golden Era guys pulled it off. Why can't, why can't we? Okay. Get the training dialed in, get the diet dialed in. Keep improving. But again, this is done as a tri-set at the end too. So we do a pullover, a hammer curl, and then the band press downs. Um, and by the end of this workout, my everything is pumped hard. My forearms are destroyed. So that's kind of the other thing I'm noting of what I'm doing with all this stuff. My forearms are destroyed no matter what. They maintain a pump. So from that perspective, my direct work should probably be, well, let's just do all this more and more pulling without straps. Let's do the RDLs without straps and then throw hammer curls in. Again, it's just looking at what's gonna give me the most, most development. And I don't think the other exercises are bad. I wanted to experiment with them. I wanted to see how they feel for a week or two. And hammer curls seem to hammer my forearms just as much as that, right? So let's just come in and do all this pulling, tons and tons of pulling. Let's drop the wrist wraps so that we're forced to squeeze everything harder. And then let's just hammer curl our way into more and more forearm. And let's just, I need to build my, my arms top to bottom. Every single part of my arm needs to be fully developed to go with all the other stuff, all right? Which we're doing. And then of course we finish up with one more set of the band press downs to failure. All right guys, but that's uh, really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.